Obviously, this is a B. But if researchers at the UK's University of Bath are successful, it could just as easily be an unmanned aircraft. Scientists at the university are undertaking research into the aerodynamics needed to fly very small, unmanned aircraft, and they're turning to nature for their inspiration. In general, we are doing research here in unmanned air vehicles. They might be in size maybe a couple of feet in, in span to maybe 5 to 10 centimeters in span in size. Uh, so we're looking at the wide spectrum of vehicles, but most of the research recently that we're doing is actually looking at the small scales. In this, we're trying to get some ideas from nature, looking at insects, birds. In fact, we have some other ideas that we're looking at, for example, jellyfish or squid, in terms of the propulsion mechanisms. Many of their research projects are designed to track the effects of flight on a variety of different wing types, and to establish the most efficient wing type for different needs. In the case of micro-aircraft, seen as the future of covert military surveillance, as well as being important for civilian operations, such as traffic monitoring or fire and rescue operations, there is a need to create the power to carry small cameras and sensors, along with the ability to maneuver and stay aloft for a reasonable period of time. In general, this kind of low-speed aerodynamics is not as efficient as the high-speed aerodynamics. So there is, you can never achieve the same efficiency that you will get for a high-speed civil transport aircraft. But you don't have much choice. You can ask whether the insects and birds are efficient. Well, they're as efficient as they could be, as, as much as the evolution led them to do this. Uh, so by looking at the nature, you just say, well, the insects or birds are doing this. And we don't really have much other options. So one of the ideas is to look at and try to imitate these flapping mechanisms. Scientific understanding of the stamina and agility of birds and insects in flight is still very limited. By unlocking these secrets, Bath's researchers hope to chart a flight plan for the future. And like insects and birds, it's just possible that such micro-aircraft might even be able to feed themselves. At the nearby University of West England in Bristol, scientists are creating a new breed of autonomous robots. Robots that will carry out specific tasks and even feed themselves while working. We're interested in robots which are intelligent and autonomous. Well, by intelligent, uh, we mean that we want robots to do the right thing at the right time. Uh, by autonomous, we want them to do whatever we want them to do, but without human uh, in uh, intervention. Um, one of the big problems with autonomy is, 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 is that of energy. The robots have to get their energy from somewhere. Well, you can imagine that robots in a, in a home or in a factory, they have access to electricity from, 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 from the mains. Um, that's not the case when a robot goes outside of, uh, out, out into the wild, if you like. Ecobot is one example of an autonomous robot. It's a simple unit designed to perform two tasks, to move towards a light source and to send out information about temperature in its surroundings. But the significant thing about this robot is that it's powered by a biofuel, in this case, flies. The whole point of energy autonomy is to have some sort of system on board that can produce uh, electricity from the environment. The environment could include sunlight, it could include uh, water power or wind power. In our case, it's what's good about it is that we can get energy, electrical energy, from organic matter. So clearly, providing the fuel cells are kept fed, then the system would continue to work. Ecobot doesn't move at any significant rate. It took 40 minutes of time-lapse camera work to capture this 20-second sequence. But it's doing other things too, sensing temperature and transmitting the information over a radio to a base station, all powered by flies. It would be possible in the long-term future with the development of contracting gels, for instance, to make things like gel bots. And if you wanted to make gel bots, then you would have to have an autonomous system and the biological fuel cell could be made into a soft system. It could be made to directly energize some of the electroactive plastics and polymers that they have, which might, in the future, be able to do some sort of uh, movement at the small level, at a small insect level.